Pension crisis in a nutshell. Remember our friend Ricky the trucker? Well, Ricky's from Illinois, and he sent me this article from Forbes about a year and a half. No, not even a year ago, in April 2018. A brief. <sighs> it's going to boggle your mind. Does that mean you should get out of Illinois? Man, I don't know. But the facts are, it's a, it's just a clown show there. No other way around that. I don't think anyone from Illinois uh, would disagree with that. And I'm going to share with you why it's such a clown show and at some point, the clown show has got to come to an end. And who's going to be left holding the wet bag? I don't know. But uh, let's dive right into this. This is actually just embarrassing. And I have a feeling it's not just Illinois. Something tells me it's endemic of Prox uh, along many, many states. And I just think Illinois is the uh, poster child of corruption. No other way around that. So let's dive right into this. Don't forget to subscribe down below, my friends. And uh and, of course, comments, thumbs up, the whole thing. If you are from Illinois, uh, this may or may not be uh, news to you. I, I hope it's not. Uh, if you're not from Illinois, I'd probably say don't move there. Um, if we can get my screen to cooperate here. There we go. All right, so this is from Forbes on uh, 2000. Uh, right there, Forbes, uh, April 28, 2018, from Adam Andrzejewski. Um, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know why. All right. So the pension palace for Illinois lawmakers in 2017. Nobody know, knows how to game the system for personal gain like an Illinois lawmaker. The political class voted themselves tens of millions of dollars in lifetime pension payouts. It's time to end their pension palace, says Adam. Consider just one gross example. Have you ever heard of the retired backbench state senator, John Friedland? Millions of dollars in pension payouts flowed to him since 1992. He earned 35000 as a state senator, plus another 46500 as a part-time employee at the Fox River Water Reclamation District. Uh, when he retired from the General Assembly, he received one-month full pension pay spike at the Water District for $8,000, causing his legislative pension to start at $80,856 instead of $30,312. Today... He's pulling down $172,981 per year due to the lucrative cost of living adjustments. Although the Friedland loophole was closed, Illinois state legislatures still have one of the sweetest retirement deals in the country. And it's had an amazing cost of taxpayers. So, I mean, he was making $35,000 as a state senator, $46,000 working part time. Uh, and then, I mean, that was it. He was making, what's that, 70, 80, let's just say $80,000. That's it. And his pension now, I get, look, I get it. So that was in 1992. So he got 20 years inflation, but still his pension now is twice, more than twice what he was making as a full-time employee uh, between a state senator position and his part-time. So I was just this nuts, man. And that's for the rest of his life, guaranteed. So a pension payouts to former Illinois governors. Uh, <laughs> here. Uh, we got uh, George Ryan. Remember, uh, he was a uh, convicted. We got Jim Edgar. We got Jim Thompson. And we got Pat Quinn. So uh, uh, pension corruption is bipartisan. It's funny. They uh, look at George Ryan and Jim Thompson look the same, actually. In fact, they look like Jesse Helms. It's kind of funny. Uh, they, I don't know if you ever heard the Sir Mix-a-Lot uh, song, but uh, they get a cop pulling over a black guy. It says, man, they all look like Tyson. If I'm uh, not a white guy, or I actually am a white guy, they look identical, identical twins. If you came here from a, a non-white state or country and you're not familiar with the way white people look, you'd say, man, those guys, they all look like Tyson. <laughs> Jeez, at least throw some glass on him and he looks the same thing. Looks just like Jesse Helms. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan received, look at that. So Ryan was receiving an annual pension amount of 197000 bucks. Pat Quinn, 141000 bucks. Jim Thompson, one fifty six. Jim Edgar, 165. Uh, Ryan received this pension until 2010 when it was stripped away by the successful public corruption prosecution conviction. Uh, now, I, look, I don't trust prosecutors as far as I can as a kick them. I mean, look at the guy, the state senator up, the st senator up in Alaska, drawing a blank what that guy's name was. But he was uh, the same guys who are actually prosecuting the, or on the Miller team prosecuted him. Uh, man, what's that guy's name? I forgot. I'm just drawing a blank. But he uh, and then he died as a convicted, I don't know if felon or not. And it was completely, completely fabricated. And I think it wasn't mistaken. One of Clinton or even Obama's uh, judges uh, threw out, just basically threw it out saying, no, the, you guys, the prosecutors are, are out of control. 
Um, in fact, uh, and, and so, but he could never reclaim the seat because he was dead. He died. He got voted out of office simply because of that. And the whole thing shenanigans because the prosecutors just completely, completely uh, were evil. And, and so anyway, as a more conservative leading person, I don't trust prosecutors as far as I can kick them simply because I know for a fact they are there for wins and losses. Now, do some prosecutors do good work? Yep. Do a lot of prosecutors do bad work? Yep. We know that for a fact. You don't have to go farther than Janet Reno. Look at Janet Reno and Martha Coakley, what they used to do to prosecute uh, innocent people accused of, uh, of, of sex crimes against children. Completely fabrications. Are there people who do that? Yes. Uh, these guys did not. And they faced years in jail. And again, it goes back to my thinking. I can only imagine how many young black men are sitting in jail right now, uh, just completely fraudulently uh, because they have no means to defend themselves. And uh, no one cares. There's no other way around that. And even if they're carrying around a little bit of marijuana, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying at the end of the day, how many prosecution people are out there right now with a with big win loss record simply because there's no way to defend yourself. I, I'm telling you right now, it's a big deal. And I, uh, I just, it breaks my heart because these guys are sitting in prison, having done nothing wrong other than being on the wrong side of an accusation uh, without the means to defend themselves. And how many, I hate to say this, but how many white women have accused black men of raping them and are sitting in jail now, those black guys, and it's not just what black guys too. I mean, how many white women have accused people of falsely raping them and, uh, and those guys are now in jail. It's, it's horrible, horrible. And it just breaks my heart. And I'm just looking at a guy like this, Jim, George Ryan, just because he's prosecuted successfully doesn't in of itself meet, lead me to say he's guilty, but he's a guy with means who could have defended himself for sure. But so wasn't, uh, who's the Trump guy's secretary, uh, his, uh, national security advisor, Mike Flint. I mean, that, you know, completely corruption It's all on all sides. It's not just polit uh, Democrats or Republicans. It's everybody. The prosecutors carry all, they have all the sticks. And you as a, uh, a defender, a defendant, got nothing. You got nothing. You can't afford that. Anyway, so, but with that said, either way, no one should be getting a $200,000 pension. That's insane as a governor. That's crazy. But look, there's four governors, three Republicans, one Democrat, making between 150, uh, basically 140 and 197 for pension. But, oh, but it gets worse. All right, so let's keep going down. Um, all right. According to the General Assembly Retirement System, 137 lawmakers uh, chose to participate in the state pension system while the rest have thankfully opted out. To fund these retirement annuities, the state government made a $21.7 million payment in 2017, meaning each lawmaker's uh, participating lawmaker's future pension cost taxpayers $158,000. <sighs> at the open the books.com, we checked out who's receiving what, when, and after how long. And it's not pretty. For example, the largest pension of all time goes to a 31 year old forgotten state senator. After retiring from the spring, from Springfield in 2000, Springfield's the state capital, Illinois. He retired from Springfield in 2000 with a pension spiking stop at the Chicago, with a pension spiking stop at the Chicago schools. Arthur Berman, Democrat, receives $20,849 every month. Annually, his pension is $250,000, which is four times more than he ever made as a Springfield lawmaker. I just, I tell you, man, if this doesn't get you up in arms, that's freaking crazy. So basically he just stops. There's a state lawmaker. Uh, and then he goes to a pension spiking stop at the Chicago schools. We're going to say, Hey, just, I want to, you know, retire here and give him a, a fat sum. And, and so that way you can say, I retired now. Give me a you know, $20,849 a month pension. That's 250000 a year he's making as a guaranteed pension. And here we go. There's Bremen, Berman right there, two, uh, 251000 Here's a Republican, Edward Pekka. It's this freaking state senator, man, making 198000 Here's Jude, and he's Republican. He's Democrat. So it goes R, D, R, D, R, 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 D, D, R, R, D. I mean, it's just, it's, it's freaking, it's insane. Here's a Roland Burris, and that sounds, that guy, man, he sounds awful familiar to me. He was the attorney general. He was involved in something not that long ago, but I forgot what. Did he take over as governor when uh, Rob Blagogovich was uh, successfully prosecuted? Again, successfully prosecuted. I don't, I, I just, I tell you, I, I've, I've since lost respect for that, for sure, uh, for those guys who prosecute people successfully, because he, you know, like, you can die to hand sandwich and the hand sandwich can't defend himself. Then he's going to jail. All right. So you look at that. I mean, so here's, we'll just pick on Burris. Roland Burris making 158,000 a year as a pension. There's Jim Edgar again. 
Uh, here's another president of the Illinois Senate, James Phillip, is making 155,000 years of pension. I, I just that's a uh, current governor uh, who just got who who just lost his reelection. Opted out of the Illinois pension system, or refused a state salary, saving taxes taxpayers millions of dollars. Uh, then uh, his challenger for governor, who won, who had another rich person, J.B. Pritzer, recently defended uh, generous state pension payouts, but hasn't commented on when he would take a salary or pension if elected. I guarantee he won't. Why well, shouldn't guarantee anything? Just because he uh, is a rich guy, rich boy. Historically, former Illinois governors took the benefits and ran. Sometimes a jail, of course. So there's Pat Quinn. Uh, who uh, 2014 lost, lost re-election to, uh, was the name, Ronner or Bonner, Ronner, yeah, uh, and start, <laughs> I mean, today Quinn receives 11773 a month, even though he uh, lost his re-election as governor, but I guess because he was a previous treasurer and lieutenant governor, we are talking about Edgar, uh, he's double dipping from the pension system for two payouts, 166000 a year from GARS and, uh, and 83000 from the state university retirement system. Plus a part-time salary for, of sixty-two thousand from the University of Illinois. So j get former Governor Edgar is costing taxpayers three hundred and eleven thousand per year, double dipping from the pension system for the GARS, and I forgot what that stands for. But then another for one hundred sixty-six thousand, then another eighty-three thousand from State University Retirement System, plus a part-time salary from the University of Illinois. For sixty three thousand bucks, and what does he do up there? Sweep the floors. Uh, so here's Thompson. He served the longest term in Illinois governor history. Then joined a prestigious law firm in Chicago, of course, in 2015. He announced his retirement from the firm, uh, but continued to agree. Uh, he consulted for two more years. Yeah, I'm sure he did. He makes a hundred and fifty six thousand pension. Then we already talked about Ryan. It's not just the powerful governors who move into a pension palace when they retire. Here are some of the uh, Illinois lawmaker big dogs. Uh, we talk, uh, Here's former state treasurer Dan Rutherford, Republican, lost the Republican primary for governor in 2014, but now he receives 140000 in pension payouts. That's more than his previous treasury salary. Uh, he was also state senator and representative since 1993. Richard Daly yeah, is double dipping for nearly 222000 a year. He makes 140000 a year as a state lawmaker pension. After he only served eight years as a state senator, how does he get one hundred forty thousand as a state lawmaker pension when he only served eight years? Another eighty-one thousand a year in city pension payouts for his twenty-two years is just how does that happen? Oh, there's Denny Hastert, of course, old Denny scumbag, <sighs> cash in uh, for a twenty-eight thousand. Uh, legislative state pension 2014 for heading off to, con uh, to his congressional career. However, the guards uh, yanked his pension after he pleaded guilty to federal bank violations and sexual misconduct against underage boys decades ago. <clears throat> I, you know, you just don't know anymore. I just, is, is that guy guilty? So my inclination was, yeah, I, but I don't even know. But I just know the fact. I just, who knows? Uh, they try to do that on Jim Jordan, Ohio, to do the same thing they did with Haster. And Jim Jordan stood up and said, no, you got nothing. And, uh, and he was, uh, was a, a, not acquitted because they never went to prosecution. But he was uh, rectified that he was absolutely was good. The guys who made up stuff against him were complete scumbags. Uh, here's uh, uh, Gary Haining, uh, served from 1978 through 2009. And then the same year, he took a job at uh, the IDOT, Department of Transportation, paying 150000 a year. But he stayed there only for 27 months, just enough time to pump his pension to 150000 annually. Then Governor Quinn rehired him at nearly 150,000 new pension, a new position as a director of legislative affairs. All told, he was making $300,000. Not bad for a public servant. Man. And former House Minority Leader Tom Cross, Republican, lost the race for state treasurer and immediately filed for his 81,000 annual pension. He was a state rep since 1993. And unlike other retired lawmakers, he is suspending his retirement serving as a Chairman of the Illinois Board of Higher Education, a volunteer position with no pay and pension. Well, great, because he's already got an $81,000 pension. So, I mean, yeah, well, that's great. He's volunteering his time. He's really serving the public on his $81,000 a year pension. The lure of shiny pension is so strong that some lawmakers bail on their legislative seat in Springfield, opting for the golden parachute instead. Consider these newly retired lawmakers moved into Pension Palace. 
uh, former rep liked or Leitch called it bittersweet when he decided not to seek re-election in 2016 after 30 years in office. Uh, but his 89,714 annual pension is super sweet. Uh, Representative Monique Davis resigned from office in 2017 after, again, a 30 year career and immediately starts receiving $7,300 every month in renuities. In her first year of retirement, she pulled down 88,000 in pension benefits. And uh, former Republican leader uh, Christine Rodogno resigned from office in July of 2017 after expressing frustration on the partisan stalemate over the state's finances. But yet she gets an $81,000 pension. Uh, widely reported was uh, the state former state treasurer and rep Don Clark Netch paid back ten thousand from her pension to the state. She thought the benefits were too lucrative and inappropriate. We asked uh, Letch and Davis whether they plan to pay back any portion of their pension. Neither responded. Of course, this sort of remorse is uh, entirely uncommon. For example, former rep Judy Irwin of Chicago spent ten years in the House and then spiked her pension with an appointment to the Board of Higher Education that had 191,000 salary. Her pension is now third largest in the system at 173,000 a year. Uh, Governor Rahner and 50 other one legisl legislatures first led by state rep uh, Lucha Field in 1995 refused to participate in the lawmaker pension. Uh, that's nearly one third of the Illinois General Assembly, both from uh, both parties. With these declinations will save while these declinations will save taxpayers tens of millions of dollars future payouts will still be pricely uh currently gars is only 14.4 percent funded and despite hundreds of millions of taxpayers dollars already poured into the system for a very small number of participants it's still not enough to satisfy lawmaker greed in illinois the pension palace is one part of the housing bubble that never burst uh, but when it does everyone in the state but the beneficiaries will pay and that, that just, uh, all right, so here we got an update. Dave Lucafield deserves credit for being the first lawmaker to refuse a pension. However, he still receives 67896 from the TRS, a teacher retirement system. So the first non-public employee uh, to refuse a lawmaker pension was state rep Tom Morrison. Was that Tommy Morrison, the boxer, uh, in 2010? I just, that, uh that, that ball was mine. All right. So anyway, there you go, my friends. I, I just, you got to get out of there. I mean, my goodness, you're paying for it. These guys are all, all scumbags. Um, that, that just, uh, I can only imagine what your state, I mean, look, we got the same thing. I mean, that's why I got moved to the South or some state that's, that's at least just not like that because that, that's just, that's, you're getting the worst cream to the crop. This is what happens to socialism and communism, by the way, communism, particularly, uh, the worst of the worst rise of the, co the, the top. And, and that's exactly communism, the most brutal and, and, and drug cartels. I mean, the most brutal rise of the top. Here's the most corrupt uh, rise of the top. Jim Edgar. I mean, that, you know, that guy, a freaking idiot, man. How do you, you just, you should, you should not show your face in public with that kind of money. Well, you got people who can't afford to pay the prescription drugs. That just angers me. And this is what happens in any kind of corrupt system, be it drug cartels, be it communism, uh, be it Illinois state system, the corrupt rise to the top, drug cartels and communism, the most violent rise to the top and, uh, and the corrupt state governments is going to be the most people who, uh, who pat the most backs and use taxpayer money, uh, to suit their own purposes. And yet I guarantee that Jim Edgar has probably got some school named after him, some road. It's nuts. And they, they look at Mississippi. I'll go back. I'll pick on you a little bit, Mississippi with Trent Lott. I'll never forget. I went, we, uh, we went to Oxford, uh, was it William Faulkner is down from that way. We just toured the campus. I always try to go to college campus and get on the football, uh, football field. I think that's fun. Uh, we couldn't get on the university of Mississippi football field. Unfortunately, that was too bad. But anyway, um, so we went down there and I saw all these places for Trent Lott, Trent Lott, Trent Lott. It was, uh, can I make myself bigger here? I don't know. Okay. Maybe not. Can I move myself? Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, and they had Trent Lott everywhere. I said, man, same thing with West Virginia, Robert Byrd. I mean, these guys just taking the taxpayer money and they're spending it to suit their own, their own, uh, to, you know, make themselves look, their own egos. There's no other way around that. It's just, it's disgusting. And I, I hate it until the, until the bottom falls out. I think we can all agree there. Anyway, so I figured I'd share that with you. It's, uh, that's frustrating and, uh, and I don't see a fix anytime soon. So, as always, you like what you see, subscribe, comments down below. Uh, thanks, uh, Ricky, the trucker. You know who you are, my friend. And uh, if you're from Illinois, it might be time to, to get the heck out of Dodge, my friends. We'll see you next time. Thanks, now.